Hello friends and welcome back to the Rally Cry Halftime Show. I'm not gonna lie you two, I kind of thought for a hot second that we weren't about to get another halftime show. I even messaged our producer like, man, I was excited to run our next segment. We're not gonna be able to, but at last, game three on the horizon. Gigi managed to bring it back. And now we get to play some based or misplaced. I forgot the words there, but uh. Let's go. Depends on your taste. <laughs> True. So I was hanging out in Twitch chat and went scouring through for what they thought about things. And I think that's really funny too with the takes. You'll be able to see what I mean when we go along those. You can tell exactly kind of where we were in each game based off of the take <laughs> um, because they might be a little immortals heavy at one point and then kind of 180 a little bit. So. Ignore Sounds good. Are, are you doing them in the order that they happened in the actual <laughs> yeah. chat? Okay, okay. <laughs> so everyone will be able to see when things went a little uh, not according to plan. So mm. for our first one, drum roll. Are you going to tell us? Oh, it's Brizzy. <laughs> <laughs> everyone on IMTC should rename to Chad. No. This conversation? No. <laughs> Misplaced? No. As... as the play-by-play -play, that would then have to cast that? Chad How one. dare you? Chad jungle, Chad top, Chad ADC. Oh like, no. No, I'm sorry, but no, 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 no. Maybe Chad one, what? two, three, four, five. It would have we, to be we like- We can get away number. with that. You Chad know. Blitz. Thing one, thing two. Yeah, Up thing two. All. Like you would have to have some kind of like, but yeah. Yeah, wait, Gabby, did you ever see this was my favorite game of all time to like watch the caster struggle because it was a game that happened in LCK. You had a player named Eve who was playing Lee Sin and their opponent there were named Lee and they were playing Evelyn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> favorite game of all time was the caster was like, ah, which one are we talking about? Which one? Is it yeah. Lee playing Eve or Eve playing Lee? Oh, <laughs> that, that was so stressful. hard. Or River and Blue being on day when both are named after things in the game. The there's Sierra. It's it's it's, it's a no for me. Well, we're not we're not done with the renaming. All right, the next oh, one. No. Oh, you might have misplaced that one. What about this though, oh, Gabby? Because I feel like this one is a little a little better, a little easier for the play by play. Just simply rename Immortals. The Chad Progressive Challengers. Mm. I'm okay with that one. I think that one's pretty based. You know, just have so much. We did see what the tarot cards were saying. Chad had a really big impact earlier on. And so we'll get to see whether or not we continue to see Chad just having so much impact in game three. He was okay in game two, right? Like a couple spots where the Kindred Ult were missing, but we know that this guy is a very high variance player and we just need to bring up that bottom side for them to move up to the tier one. Yeah, yeah. And you know, some bands, are bands, but they're named after like the lead vocalist. I'm, I'm blanking on Hootie ones and like the Blowfish. That. Yeah, yeah. So, Chad Progressive Challengers, I think, is something that you could definitely oh, yeah. use because, especially because Chad is a leading voice as well. I mean, we talked a bit Hi. about Chad and Joey. One of the things that makes them so strong on this team is those intangibles, those, uh, you know, communication skills and that playmaking ability that happens beyond mechanics. So Chad getting his props if they were to do a rebrand around the name. <laughs> yeah. right. Also, I didn't realize that Steve was in Best Panthene. Mm. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> next one we have we have a lot of these to go through guys we got we got quite okay, a few okay. all right which was very active next one tactical shaking now seeing wixie play like this this was during game one mm. Mm. i don't know i mean i feel like this one's misplaced only because immortals is already done with their season <laughs> Right? It's not as though Tactical can <laughs> lose his spot for now. And I feel like Wixie has been a player who has had a lot of downs and also a lot of ups. So it's going to be definitely a spot where it depends on what version of Wixie we're getting on the day. I feel like I've been rather impressed with Wixie's game so far, but we need to see more of this uh, version of him playing. Which is part of the identity that Tactical has had at times as well. So when you're, if you were to seriously consider a 
switch of the position. It would typically be for one that is more, you see often, oh, this is the more stable player. And then that's why we're bringing them in. Or sometimes it is the opposite where, oh, the highs of this player are so high. We want to see what happens. So when you offer that description and there are some similarities between that's when reasoning. And yes, it is the end of the season. I was actually just talking to some of the Immortals players yesterday when they were at the studio trying to kind of get a vibe for them and where their heads sat. So I think when you're at this point and you're focused on fixing what they know they need to work on, which is kind of the impression that I'm getting, then you're not as much thinking about the switches and roster in that way. And you're very focused on the squad. Re respectfully replaced. Respectfully replaced, not misplaced? Or misplaced. Oh, wait a second. That's We're a, talking about replacing. Respectfully <laughs> misplaced. And not replaced. All right, not all right. replaced. <laughs> Important we'll to clarify that take. one. <laughs> okay, we'll replace some with our next take. All right, yeah. The the next one that we got. This one I'm finally going to go talk about a GG a little bit. A personal cut. This is right oh, draft. How, how are we? How are we feeling about this? Yeah, uh, Tom Kench did a lot. We didn't talk about a whole lot during the game, but the number of times where Prismal was actually devouring people, the only time where I was like, oh, that one wasn't it, was when Prismal actually devoured Yusui instead of the rest of his team, but he saved a lot of his teammates throughout the course of this game. Would love to see it come back. Big playmaker here for Prismal, for sure. Yep, sometimes... People, when you're watching, it's easy to underestimate the quickness of that decision making and the way that fight broke out and going for the aggressive use of Devour instead of the more defensive one, but overall played well and was able to execute in a way that allowed Golden Guardians to persist in those fights and thus live with just enough HP to mitigate any of the attempts of Immortals to burst them down. So, yeah, I'll go with Based. Yeah, I like I like this next one considering what just happened here. Um, this one's from Colomer. Um, can never doubt Immortals in playoffs. Um, I'm curious how you feel about that now because I took this about 15 minutes ago and uh, we all yep. saw what happened. So the thing is, there's been an interesting narrative about IMT because they will consistently make like top six or so. Uh, the last time they did not make top six was 2021's Proving Grounds. But they also play very close to what their seeding was during the regular season, right? They're like one or two spots above. So, ooh, I mean, Wixie Joy, they clutch up really hard during the playoffs. But I am going to say the way that they're playing today, I think they're going to clutch up and I go with based again. Okay, all right. Ooh. We don't end there either for Colomer, though. So, I mean, I'm going to let you have the first shot of this next one, all right? Colomer right. then fires back with Chad. Whenever you watch this back, I am sorry for doubting. Also still before things went downhill. Okay, okay. So it's saying never doubt them and then I'm sorry for doubting. So this is the <laughs> follow up in the... <laughs> all right, all Call, right. having a day in our Twitch chat, all right? <laughs> so I, whereas, because I feel like this is somewhat of a connected take to the last one. And I know Joshi was saying that it's based in that you have to believe in them because of their consistency in that kind of top six placing. I'm actually gonna, and don't hate me because this is very borderline. I'm gonna go for misplace Ooh. just because when I'm looking at the team and that is the expectation, and I think that's still a good one to be, oh, you've been consistently kind of in top six of the leagues you've been participating in. But now I wanna see that itch more. I know this team doesn't want to just be top six. They want to keep pushing. So I want to see that be the internal expectation to surpass what has been the norm. And therefore, until you reach that, it's got to be the the misplaced. Ooh, team. it's a very thin line. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. This next one, this is where you can tell things started switching into Gigi's favor. All right. Mm. And I wish that we had Twitch emoji configuration here on broadcast. Not, you're just gonna have to imagine. Simply put, GGC team fighting. It was okay, man. They've definitely been one of our best team fighting teams throughout the course of the regular season. And, you know, because it's not feels good, man, it just feels okay, man, I'm gonna have to say feels it's okay. based, right? Like, Ooh. GGC, I actually feel as though they've been showing up for a lot of these team fights, and they did do a really good job, to, like, eking out on a lot of them in game two. But in game one, you know, it's definitely a spot where it's been, it feels okay, man. It's definitely not the prime Golden Guardians that we've seen throughout the regular season.
Yeah, I, I'm aligned with that because of the feels okay man part. Because if it were great, then you would have to expect it to be on that level of team fighting where sometimes it's enough to really bring back what seem like not great situations a bit more consistently. You know what I mean? Where they were able to do that in the last game and pull back from advantage that Immortals had, but didn't really have any of that showing in game number one. So if game number three goes that way and they're really into that fire form as well that we've seen from them throughout the season, then I think you can change it to a feels great man and a, your feels good man, or I'm going great because I want it to be even above good. And that still be true, but we'll stick with this one. So basically, we'll kind of see where we fall going on forward and True. then kind of kind of make up our mind. Are we yeah. all aligned in that one? All right, we'll yeah. have to see yeah. because there is the chance here now that we brought into a game three that we could see a lot more coming out from Golden Guardians if they can take this next game off to Immortals. Our draft is ready. It's time for game number three. Let's gonna see who's gonna be moving on forward in our boat lower bracket. All righty, nice that year. means one game. One game, that's it, it's best of one. That's all really? it comes down to. I know we set up a lot at the beginning of the day, Gabby, about how Young and Yusui were going to be playing up against each other. The Young <laughs> rookie coming through, who has had a little bit of time in LCS versus Yusui, who's been around for a while but did take a break. And they've both been fine, right? Neither of them have really necessarily come out with a ton of impressive things. They've had some moments here and there, but it really has been about who on different teams have been popping off. Joey in game one was having one of the best Blitzcrank games I've seen from him this year, and Concept as well, showcasing a lot of growth on the Cassante in particular, and just jumping on top of all the members of IMT. And so as we go into this last game, Chad, who had a really strong game one, uh, was really finding big advantages over Rosethorn, already losing the Graves. Yeah, that was a pick that worked out very well for Immortals in game number one. And kind of building off of that, that credit that you gave over to Joey in game one and where the pop offs have been coming from, it's also a way that kind of Immortals has been dictating where they want to play the game out of. And game one, they really were pushing into the advantages that were created by that bot side. In game two, they were drafting around, hoping that ADD on the top side, they could bring that match up there. And then Concept and Response was able to have some great moments to shine. So if Golden Guardians or Immortals decide to bring some focus towards the mid lane, then we'll get to see that battle executed a bit more directly, but that's only going to be shown on the Rift once we get past the drafting stage, which is beginning with a Jinx lock-in for Array. Yeah, that's his third game in a row coming through on this champion. The Thresh is taken here by Joey with the Bloodscrank already removed, but it does mean that Prisma almost definitely going to be going for that Tom Kench yet again. It was very packed from it in the previous game, and I'm also kind of expecting we probably won't be going back towards the Kindred uh, potentially for IMT. They do have the option of grabbing that, but usually we do see that it has been a little bit difficult for them to coordinate, throwing down the Lambs Respite and using the Explosive Cask on top of it to create enough space. And so I'm curious what Immortals do want to continue going for as we see a lot of safety yet again provided for uh, Golden Gardens. And please, please do not lock this in. Okay. That is not that much better. Okay. Uh, Tell me more of your thoughts. Tell, tell Both me about these characters this are reaction. like automatically losing the jungle matchup to Gragas, right? Both of them are super, super difficult for them to ever get like the second part of their combos off. The Q1, Q2, Gragas automatically just body slams and Lisa never lands the second part. Same thing with the Jarvan. Because Gragas' belly is so fat, he's had so much beer, Gabby. Every single time Jarvan goes in for a flag and drag, you're going to get knocked up first. You're not going to be doing almost any of your damage coming through with the Dragon Strike. And so it creates a very tough spot for either of these junglers to be super impactful in these moments. Now, Jarvan can do cute things with the flag and drag. If you time it right, you do get out of the explosive cast, but you're just setting yourself up for kind of a rough early game. And Rosar's going to have to spend a lot of this trying to avoid Chad if this is going to be his Gragas. And a rough early game for a champion that very much is wanting to make an impact in the early game with Rose Thorn playmaking. So uh, I do want to see how that matchup ends up working out because game number one was dictated by the fact that while 
Immortals didn't necessarily need Chad's intervention to get the advantages they did. A lot of that was just off of Joey landing some good hooks. It still felt more like there was yeah. that presence from Chad and he was still having an impact, getting stronger, getting a lot of um, resources from the jungle. Whereas Rose Thorn on the Maokai wasn't really able to get into it. Sometimes didn't even get to throw the ultimate out at the start of a fight. Didn't really get to get there to put the saplings down. So now when you're already identifying those parts in the jungle matchup, Chad, if he's on this Gragas feeling like there's a bit more potential in how he can offset the J4 for Rose Thorn, then that would get me a little bit concerned, but you got to see how the rest of the draft is going to come through as well and where Rose Thorn is going to try to bring some of that agency with this pick as we make our way through the latter portion and Anar. I know you're your I'm, fave. I'm a big fan, right? We both have the plushies. Mine, you can only kind of see his feet right now, but he is hanging out up here. Nara has been a character that has scaled a lot with skill, and unfortunately, uh, Concept has been looking so much better, and oh god, this matchup is so hard for Nara to play. When you are mini, you take one axe, you're down a quarter of your HP at level one. You take a second one, you're down to half HP. It is so difficult for ADD to play out some of the early laning phases here, and especially if Concept goes Ghost, it doesn't necessarily get easier when you get the training force online. So. It's going to be a lot of physical damage coming out for IMT. It is going to be the Gragas for Chad here. This is a lot of physical damage, as we said. You have three auto attackers. Suddenly, things like the Frozen Heart are looking super, super strong for characters like Rose Thorn. And they have dive buddies now. So they are going to be able to dive on top of Wixie, who is very reliant at this point on Joey for his safety. All right, dive buddies for GG. IMT with their lock-in. Uh, give me the deets. What are we looking at for each of these teams? Is there a win condition? And who are you favoring? I mean, it looks very similar to me from one of the games that we were on LCS yesterday where you're going to be trading out both of the 80 carries rather consistently. Golden Garden is going to be throwing three people over at Wixie, whereas IMT is going to be throwing three people over at Array. And it's really going to depend on as to which one actually survives some of this early onslaught to then turn around for the ensuing fight. After that, it's going to be kind of favored towards IMTC because you do have Nar who's going to be good at scrapping in the long haul. You have Gragas who's good at continuing to scrap and you have the Tristana who will have enough range. So if Concept isn't able to continue having all of the buffs from the Conqueror stacked up after the initial dive, it feels as though IMT should have some opportunities to continue winning these longer fights. All right, and their last chance to try to do exactly that. Golden Guardians and Immortals here in the best of three lower bracket run. 30 seconds until but yeah, I think when we're seeing a lot of Tristanas come back through. I mean, we did just see Tristana played in the mid lane in the LCS yesterday. Then it also puts that lens on the mid laner here in the case of Yasui. Hmm. How much are you going to aggress forward with these jumps? How much are you really going to try and set up in some of the dispositioning with the buster shots as opposed to when you save that as more of an escape mechanism? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you do have a lot of opportunities for Yusui to be very aggressive with the Buster Shot in lane. Uh, later on in the game, it becomes a little bit harder to use it, uh, especially because Khan's just going to be right on top of you. If you knock the LeBlanc away, it's like, great, well, she's already blown her load. She's already done everything that she needs to. And then can just kind of leave. So it's going to be a lot of pressure on Yusui to find advantages early on. And we have seen that... I mean, LeBlanc, despite the recent bust that this champion has been receiving, it has been difficult to actually pilot this champion simply because there's a lot of characters like this Thresh and this Tom Kench who provide a lot of safety to everybody that you would normally try and jump on. And we saw uh -oh. Yasui when playing the LeBlanc kind of running into some of that difficulty. There's those axes you were talking about. Yeah. Don't want to take any of them. Nar so squishy in the early stages, so concept waiting out in the bush to get this this lockdown yeah. on ADD. Honestly, really good play from Concept 1, because I'm pretty sure ADD was outside of experience range and Rose Thorns in mid. Oh, going in, flag up, Yasui, burn it down. Wow. First blood, good at two minutes and nine seconds. Wow, I don't think I've seen that before, but this is what Rose Thorn was known for last year when he was playing with CLG, going for these inventive early paths, making sure he was trying to move away from any vision his opponents had, finding this early kill for himself and getting Yusui to blow the teleport early is huge. This matchup is supposed to be a little bit difficult for LeBlanc to navigate, and Yusui already put behind. 
Golden Guardians leaning into the skills on which these players have made their names. And yes, that Rose Thorn special being put into full effect for this first blood across that mid lane. Over on the bot side, Chad making the presence known. Joey gets the death sentence onto one. Array keeping the target onto the jungle. Nice, Chad nice. for the slam. Prismal eliminated. Exhaust onto Chad with the zap to follow. Another entrance from Rosethorn so they can get the return kill and putting that into the pocket of Array as well where you want to see it. Yeah, great stuff already coming through. You get to see Array finding that early kill while the other one goes over to Joey. I mean, a kill is a kill, but it's still going to be a spot where Array gets to stick around in lane, get to make sure that the wave actually crashes and is not going to be in a tough position. But also have to praise ADD so far. Concept has not actually been putting a whole lot of pressure on this NAR after the early level one. It did quite a bit of damage, and now ADD has healed up a lot with the plate footwork, and Concept has no ghost. Just had to expel it. Taking oh, a look oh. back at this play down bot. This is where Joey back on one of the chants he loves most. Yeah. I mean, Chad here with the uh, flash follow onto the initial flash ends up getting the first kill. And if Rosethorn's not here, this is just a one for nothing. But Rosethorn with the flash in gets that little bit of damage down, gets the auto attack speed increased. And now that there is a. Ooh. Uh, red buff coming through. We also get to see all the cool options. I wonder if they forgot to turn on. I wonder. I wonder. I'm just looking at Prismal sitting on top of the sword. You can see we see Ooh, it. Chad here to make sure that Young can't go in on the kill. Yeah. I mean, it's, everybody is coming in already into this mid lane. A lot of pressure already coming through as it means that Golden Guardians, they feel a little bit more comfortable to play for the Raptors. Ooh, meanwhile, over here on the top side, Concept is just still trying to play that thing a bit aggressively and still complete presence across yeah. this mid lane as the supports have been unlocked. It's just Array and Wixie down bot attempting to get their farm up. A slight advantage for Array right now off of that last aggression on the bot side and the junglers and supports finally leaving the vicinity of the mid lane. And yeah. Young still has the teleport to be able to use now. Yasui had previously expelled that after falling to first blood and they'll be returning to lane. Everybody going to be Back in a spot of relatively even spots, like a, kind of across the board, only 1,000 gold going in favor of Golden Guardians. But the big thing that I kind of want to look at is the fact that Young has actually, with the help of Rose Thorn, survived some of this early laning phase that LeBlanc does kind of struggle with into the Tristana. Yusui has not been able to find any of these moments. And so as we start looking at how uh, Yusui will be scaling into the game, really going to be needing two items. We're a little bit past the point where Yusui gets to do whatever they want as the strong laning champion that Tristana is, and instead going to have to rely on the power of Wixie, Chad, and ADD to kind of carry them through some of the fights around the upcoming dragons as Golden Guardians are already starting it off. We have Golden Guardians on the dragon now, and Young having hit level 6, still pulling ahead of Yusui in lane. IMT have the blast cone. Joey already is sweeping around to see if there are any lingering GG members. No chance to step up to this. And Immortals, they don't want to extend too far into where they did not have any vision established. So the first dragon going over to Golden Guardians. Oh, but back into lane. Shot thrown on down. That's not the place that Prismal wants to be. Knows that the hits are going to be good from Wixie. Look at all that cash money. Yeah, 370 gold going over to Wixie. Not the most potentially stacked up, but still big equalizer coming through at that point for Immortals. The fact that Wixie gets that money. And I love the attention that Chad is playing down here towards the bottom side. Has already said, yeah, the middle of the map is going okay, but we can get a big advantage coming out for our bottom side of the map. If we can get Wixie ahead, that can really snowball us through some of these fights before Array hits those two item spikes. And the thing about when you have your bot laner on a pick like Draven, it's all the better to bring that focus yeah. towards bot side because a Draven position to do well and really getting these good spikes and advantages and building up, great. A Draven that's been starved and killed early and never is able to do what yeah. he needs to do. Not so great. So Immortals feeling good about being able to bring some of that action over towards Wixie. Yeah. And also, I, I want to give a lot of props here to ADD for actually creating 
uh, situation where he is not behind in the top lane, right? He is going even with Concept as the Nar into the Olaf, and it gives you a lot more freedom to play some of these fights later on. Already picking up the uh, Ninja Tabby in order to, excuse me, the plated steel caps to have that extra movement speed and try and run away from Concept. And so, Immortals, they no longer need to worry about that top side of the map. They can start looking for some of these big engages, and Chad is like, oh, hello, there is a Jarvan over here. Maybe we should rethink that. Both of the junglers making sure to account for one another when their presence is known and have been hovering around the mid lane for pretty much the same windows. Prismal also making his way over towards mid. Really kind of that game plan, just giving Array as much an opportunity to build up farm. 20 farm advantage over Wixie right now, but you do have to account towards the other ways that Draven has been able to put money into his pockets. Yeah. So, as we see Golden Gardens, they don't shy away from fights. They're going to be starting off this Rift Herald first. They push Yusui out of playing, make sure they have already there. And just as we've been seeing, the team that has had extra members around these Rift Heralds has actually been winning some of these games. And so, Immortals, they leave Wixie down on the bottom side. They're going to be giving over the Rift Heralds for free to Golden Guardians. And this is coming at a fantastic time. You can also pick this up. You can drop it down for the mid lane in order to get pressure for that from the Dragon. Yusui? It's caught by the knockup. Oh, the knockup and Golden Guardians very aware of the fact that Yasui, when ample time has crossed, can just use the rocket jump to get out of there. But that's what they're looking for. When crossing mid lane, it was first yeah. just to get over towards Rift Herald so they could create that pressure and take that objective for themselves. They were successful in doing so. It's a now squad. as a unit once again down towards bot, getting the tongue lash and the abyssal dive and more. The response of the death sentence and the flag on in. Rose Thorn helping Young get that kill golden guardians clumping together in their movement working out well in these engages yeah honestly the fact that they get the push in the mid lane pushing yusui out of the middle of the map allows golden guardians to spend everybody they move from the rift Herald all the way down to the bot lane find the kill there and they're only going to lose about one play for it here in the middle as yusui is going to be taking some big chunks out of that mid lane turret but it's still going to be a spot where it's only a small gold lead coming through for golden guardians and this time as you already called out it is leblanc uh here for young Gonna be really focused and trying to find some of these advantages so that they don't have a similar uh, game as what we saw the last time. Yeah, and the fact that Golden Guardians could do that to try and keep this pressure on to Yasui so Yasui can't work into the advantage that Tristana has and then move so swiftly because you're not trying to hide that intel that you were making that rotation down bot and it was pretty telegraphed but it was the sheer power of what they're able to bring and Prismal, you know, at the final moments of that flashing forward to get the lash and the dive for the engage for Golden Guardians to follow up. They're keeping themselves in what has been pretty tight. They've had some early advantages, but Immortals have found those windows to try and build up Wixie as much as possible. And that's still a threat that you're going to have to worry about, that Kraken Slayer having been worked for both of the bot laners at this point. Uh, a couple of the other first items coming in line as Golden Guardians running into multiple members in the jungle here for IMT. But still, I'm thinking, Joshi, that both of these teams are feeling like they have some conditions they can play through. Yeah. And it's really going to depend so much on the setup, and I love the fact that IMT are you looking for an opportunity to jump on Array. They did get this flash. It was crucial earlier on in the series in order to try and find some big opportunities to fight. But now, Immortals are here first. They get Yusui back up to full HP, and the flash misses from Joey. Ah, uh, was going for it. Prismal taunting back a little bit after that one. But commending the play, cannot connect. Rose Thorn still hanging around Array and Prismal on this bot side with this wave. See if they need any assistance. Crossing over through the jungle, Chad is also ready to intervene if yeah. needed. But we're in that second dragon territory. Golden Guardians were able to swipe the first one. Immortals with no vision couldn't find any entrance into the river. It's looking like a similar scenario now. And Joey gets the hook onto one. Dragon already burned down, though. Immortals don't oh, he goes in for the fight. So it's Golden Guardians are the ones that won it. Locks thrown down in response. Cataclysm into the back onto Wixie. So in the end, Joey is traded for Prismal, but Wixie eventually falls because of that lockdown. Chad and Yasui now subject of Young, who gets shot on away by Yasui using that buster shot. But, whew. It was Golden yeah. Guardians that ended up wanting to keep hitting that go button. 
Yeah, I mean, I was very impressed. Prismal going over the wall to get the fight restarted on the opposite side. Creating some more opportunities here, but it's still such a small gold lead coming through for Golden Guardians. And they do drop this Riptile. Should be able to get a crash off uh, to get a little bit of money over for Rose Thorn, but not the most effective thing in the world as we do see Golden Guardians. Oh, they're, they're spoiling for another fight. We said that they don't back down, but this is one that's like, okay, well, you got what you came here for. You got the crash of the Riptile. Maybe it's time to leave. Yeah, don't, uh, don't stop with too much against Joey and Yusui here in the mid lane. Joey can try and lock down. But you get that crash across mid before the 14 minute mark, so still some late action afforded. Yeah. I mean, it's just been a much calmer game three, I feel like, from these two teams as they are both facing potential elimination. And it really ha it's interesting to see which players play more aggressively and which players play more defensively when you are in those kind of situations. And I love the fact that Rose Thorn, he starts off the game by doing his wolves and then walking behind in order to give Young an opportunity to actually play the game. Whereas for the rest of it, it feels as though Prismal calming down a little bit now comes back down towards the bottom side of the map. And trying to make sure that Array, their big win condition here, is going to actually be relatively strong. You don't need to make some of these big plays because of the risk-reward of trying to fight a Draven. Ah, yeah, the risk-reward. You're like, well, hmm. how much do I really want to go in? Is it worth it? That's always the big question. Is it worth? Is it worth? 14 minutes in, though. No more plates. Teleport being used by ADD to get back here top. It's been Concept and ADD kind of just left to do their thing as expected with most top laners most of the time, but particularly yeah. as of late. To quote Steve, it is uh, 14 minutes. We need to double check on the top lane. Oh, it is basically even, which means that ADD is winning. Cool beans. <laughs> All right, we'll check again at 28 minutes. Flash from Joey. Not going to be landing the hook. That's the second time, unfortunately. And now Golden Guardians... And they get a little bit of a push, but not going to be rewarded a whole lot. As we go back to more of this extended laning phase, the fact that all the turrets are still standing is, again, a bit of a testament to how this game is relatively slow around the objective play. Man, Joey really wants to make it happen, though. And even though it's been slow, it is one of those things that can be changed in just a moment. Good warding, though, from Golden Guardian's side, especially around the engage opportunities of Immortals. Yasui, because of the original pressure prior, has just been focusing on kind of farming up a bit in this mid lane, wants to be a threat later on, has the BT completed. We're starting to see some of the itemization come online on both of these sides. Rift Herald for Immortals almost to completion. The concept zoned out by ADD. Rosethorn going on in the Cataclysm thrown down to Prismal. Going for the Devour for the safety. And oh, ADD can stun up onto one, but Rosethorn with a knockup. Young with a kill credit. And Nisui rocket Concept's jumping going. out of there. Concept nice and speedy with the ghost. Young wants to get the lock, but all oh, the whirling death oh, cut across. Concept Concept goes boom. Manages to survive a chat on the outskirts, so there's still an opportunity to connect a good hook onto a ray, which means Joey still continues on to that killer instinct. Box thrown down. Wixie should be killed off, but manages to get some damage down prior so multiple kills granted on both sides teleport coming in from immortals but gg done with the fight and the gold still bang on even as chad's the one who actually picks up the rift herald kills going back and forth and it's wild every time wixie is going down they're trading at least one on back getting the extra money making sure that all those uh bounty stacks end up coming through and so imt I mean, they are keeping themselves bang on even, and we got to look at how this is going to affect Yusui later on in the game, because they're only a little bit behind where Young is because of the plates that they've actually been able to pick up, and just the money that they're kind of ambiently grabbing from having a little bit of a better laning phase. And so Yusui, even though this fight really isn't about him, will have a ton of damage later on to provide to the fight. But this fight is really determined on the fact that there's so many small interactions between all of these players. And with neither AD Carry really participating, it comes down to the fact that Golden Guardians, they see a fight, it's like Pokemon, man. You just gotta go in, you lock eyes, it is time to fight. Everybody throws everything right on in, but Concept, a little bit too far forward, ends up dying to the explosive shot coming through. And then after that, this is both AD Carry is trying to fight the supports. What do you gotta do? It's just like, all right, well, let's see, we're back. Let's go get him. And back into live as well after Immortals take this second dragon. 
concept pushing up over on the top side. It looked like Immortals were also just pressuring across mid before making that rotation over towards Dragon as well to ensure that they could get that objective take. Golden Guardians wanting to keep them locked in the mid lane so that Concept can get this alone time over on the top side with the waves onto this yeah. tier two. He's rotating down. ADD, Chad, and the rest of IMT into the jungle, and the wards are in Golden Guardian's favor, making it easier for them to traverse this area across the mid and top lane. Yeah, I mean, a big chunk goes into the top lane turret, but not actually going to be enough to take it down. Meanwhile, Yusui finds it on the other side, and as both teams again, whoever wins this game gets to move on in the lower bracket. The loser is going to be done with their season for the spring split. I mean, I gotta say, I am favoring IMT from this position. They have so many tools, and I mean, you get to see it with the Bloodthirster already completed. We don't get to see exactly how much it's actually, like, saving every single time, but you can already tell that Young's having trouble trying to take down Yusui through this shield. And... When we're looking at this game kind of from that outer view, as you're just reminding the audience that it's the end yeah. of the season or end of the split for one of these teams, it's a bit of a heartbreaker for different reasons for these squads when looking at this match specifically. Because Golden Guardians, if they lose out, they're thinking, ah, we actually were one of the top kind of contenders during the regular season, and this is a fairly early exit for what I'm sure were their personal expectations. Immortals, I think, have fought really well during this series. And I think even in the loss during the previous game, they still had so many good moments early on. So it's a team that you feel could continue to perform if they get to that next level. And with that pressure, on both sides in a game three, then there's that additional level of motivation to keep themselves into this spring, considering yeah. the lower bracket run they both have the potential to make. And it, it is worth noting as well that while Golden Guardians had a disappointing uh, Proving Grounds Summer 2022, they have made some fairly deep runs in Proving Grounds in previous splits, right? Getting third in 2022 spring, also getting third in 2021 summer. Right, like these guys have been super, or this organization has been super up and down, and Rosethorn has not really had situations where they are not doing well in these previous proving grounds. They really want to have some opportunities, and it's also worth noting that, I mean, Rosethorn used to play alongside Prismal all the way back uh, several years ago with this roster. They're trying to make sure that they can do well again. Trying to make the play across the mid lane. Joey takes a big chunk from a raise ultimate. They're all alive. Yeah. Again. <laughs> Again. Everybody lives. I feel like that was so much of what we were saying yesterday on the LCS broadcast, Gabby. Just saying like, wow, everybody's <laughs> still alive. Everybody continues to come on back. Cad tries to stop one of them, but maybe a little bit late on that. And so we're still waiting for one of these big fights to kind of break the game open. Neither side really finding a definitive win as the gold. It really has been hovering around, you know, this one 2,000 gold lead back and forth over and over again as Rosetone goes in. And they see no mana? Uh, there's the Cataclysm. Oh. Chad getting burned on down. Teleport in for Golden Guardian. So no more Chad. Wixie Mark low. Joey hook onto Concept. Young over the wall wanted to try and get close enough to poke down Wixie, but couldn't do it. That's a flash expelled from the Immortals bot laner. That's a Baron started up by Golden Guardians. Yeah, Chad is dead. No opportunity of a smite steal, but here comes the teleport from Isui going towards the top side. It's a really tough contest from INT, but they're going to try and make it happen. Golden Guardians committing to the Baron. They're still burning it. Yasui coming as fast as he possibly can into the pit. Oh. He goes, but Rosethorn securing the Baron at last. Hook onto Prismal. The shield will keep him up. Blast Cone to send ADD. Joey and Yasui flying. The flashing here so that Young can try and get the hit onto ADD. Cannot connect. Oh. Golden Guardians have to be careful, though. They're marked down pretty low, and they want to keep those purple. ADD didn't have the ultimate up at the beginning of that. You saw him jump in on the rest of the team, but not able to get that off. That is game-changing, potentially, as Golden Gardens, they walk away the Baron, lose nobody, and they're going to be back on the map in time for the upcoming Dragon. They are already two towards the Soul. Getting a third will put them on Soul Point. And this is probably the most impactful lead we've seen this entire game so far, Gabby. And bounties on both Rosethorn and Young. Array had been working for some time to get that farm up and has now been two, one, and four off of some of these fights. Oh, so Rose Thorn. Golden Guardian oh. might have to kill a Rose Thorn here. He's the ult on the last attempt, but Immortals do find a pick ahead of this dragon. 
Great play from Joey as well, pulling Rosethorn just out of range of the flag so the drag couldn't pull him over. And here we go. Young trying to find a little bit of a steal, hopping over the wall. Not going to be able to do anything there at all. Or do they? Oh, it was close. Close one, close one. But now dragons even for both immortals picking up their seconds. So Golden Guardians wanted to try to keep up their dragon stacking, get to that soul and Rose Thorn getting there early, wanting to establish some vision, but the play going the way of immortals. You take down that jungler, you get the Drake for yourself. Yeah, and this uh Baron power play coming through is basically non existent. And this entire time Yusui's done a fantastic job over in the side lanes as it takes a good chunk of damage, but they've gotten the bot lane outer turret, they got the bot lane inner turret. There's a lot of extra money already being input into Yusui. Getting the bottom lane turret is effectively two kills every time you are able to take it down. So this Tristana, still on the two items relatively cleanly, is looking for opportunities to find even more gold. And as the both uh, AD carries coming through for IMT are getting stronger and stronger. Their range advantage is getting better and better. Jarvan's becoming weaker and weaker. The longer this game goes, the better it's going to get for IMT. Which is why Golden Guardians, they want to continue pressuring down these lanes. They finally answer back on that mid lane turret to take it. And now bringing that same pressure over towards spot. They do have to be worrisome of some of the pressing forward on that top side ADD has been doing for Immortals just to be able to answer where Golden Guardians have not been able to establish pressure under the Sparen buff that is now expelling itself in five seconds. So Golden Guardians, despite losing out on the Dragon, giving a pick over to IMT, needing to keep a watchful eye on Yasui, they do still make something happen. Yeah, they get something. They get at least a little bit. But it has been fascinating to watch, right? Golden Guardians have typically struggled trying to play all three lanes, but they just go on Joey. Rose Thor's target onto Joey means that oh, he has better access onto the line. Wix D down. No more damage. Yasui, is this the time that you make the play? ADD already marked out of it. Yasui having to flash over the wall. And Young now turning his sights on the enemy mid laner. Rose Thorn focused down onto the turret. ADD in a weak skin state to be going for the double kill for Young. Take down the turret. Is this it? Golden Guardian. Is this it? Get the ace, baby. They, they just I get can't. it like right outside the enemy nexus. But Golden Guardians, so many members are low. Yeah. The death timers are still so low. Golden Guardians not going to chance it. But I mean, out of nowhere, it feels like Golden Guardians manufactured that fight. And just like ADD did to them in the previous game, Concept finds the wraparound on this Olaf. Sandwiches all of IMT. Gets a huge gold lead out of nowhere. It was only 2,000 before the fight's already back up to 5,000. Golden Guardians. I mean, they find the one fight they finally needed. IMT were not ready. That team fighting that was discussed right before this game that has been a strength of Golden Guardians throughout the season, and you're wondering if they're able to really push the boundaries of these plays later on when it counts. And here they get that lock onto Joey. They take down the support, gives them access to Wixie. They take down the major damage, and then ADD effectively brought out of the fight means that they cannot stop the onslaught of Golden Guardians to finish off the entirety of the team. And now we'll have the assistance of supers across the mid lane and pushing up over through the jungle, establishing their wards so that IMT will have a more difficult time getting these initial hooks and getting the lockdown from their team that has allowed them to push back against GG. Yeah, and now Golden Guardians with this uh, inhibitor already open. Young has more walls to play with can be more of this ambush predator and ADD like he doesn't have anything to pick up until he gets to the inhibitor as the waves are already crashing that is half the inhibitor turret already gone uh here for IMT but as they start to back away they're a little bit more worried but trying to make sure that ADD gets nothing as he's already knocking on the doors ADD they don't back putting the mottos into the inhibitor turret currently and will be able to get this so it's a decision for Golden Guardians to make. Young being sent to try and answer as the rest of Golden Guardians remain knocking at the door of IMT. They just oh, have heard in response. There's a hook onto Rose Thorn. Teleport coming in as well. Devour from Prismal to keep Rose Thorn safe. Chat looking for the angle. Now you're getting the response to teleport from Golden Guardians here. The box being thrown down cannot connect with the death sentence. ADD locking onto Young and Immortals keeping it on to the mid laner of Golden Guardians means that. 
the rest of Golden Guardians are retreating into the jungle so they can get back safely. Yeah, Golden Guardians, I mean, they're being kept honest here by the engages coming through from IMT. It really is all about Joey, and they get the read like, hey, some people might be backing here. They don't catch anybody, but Young on the far side of the map. Going to have to look at all the way around. Concept has already teleported. IMT trying to throw this Hail Mary. It's going down quickly. Concept, are you going to try and make a miracle play? Not the one to do it a little late on they all live. the Jinx Super Mega Death Rocket. And IMT now with the Rally Cry Baron buff. Golden Guardians, can they collapse upon D -D -D. E to remove one? Flash over the wall, but there are too many more to come. Hop to just venture on over to the blue side Surely of the map. Surely he's dead. <laughs> Surely. Young's How chasing him. Yeah, I'm like, Young's chasing him, but... Oh, yeah. no. He's out. He's out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, ADD, all five Baron buffs still up for IMT, but it is going to be a Dragon Trainer on the other side, really cutting yeah. down into the gold lead that Golden Guardians have been building up for themselves. And yet again, it is punch and counter punch from both sides of the map. Golden Guardians putting themselves one Dragon away from the Chemtech Soul. But there has been so much time bought here for IMT. Three items completed onto Wixie. Yusui almost done with that third. And I think that might be one more shot for Golden Guardians, right? If you do not find a win up against Tristana before they get three items, or like once they get three items, it is so much of a problem. I feel as though Golden Guardians, they need to try and manufacture a fight almost immediately, but they're not poised to do so. They're still cleaning up the waves from before. Looking at who is going to be starting off these plays, a lot of the previous engages, we see Rose Thorn step up, go in, gets a bit chunked, and then Prismal has used the Devour to save him in a couple instances that has been great for the team fights, where you get that disruption from Rose Thorn, you get that safety from Prismal, and then Golden Guardians can finish off in some regards. So if they can repeat those positives from the fights that have allowed them to get those big pushes onto the inhibitors and beyond, then we're now in those windows at almost 30 minutes where it is enough to be able to finish off everything through the Nexus, where Immortals, it's, they've been keeping it really nice, though, with some of these engages as well. I mean, we give constant props to Joey you have to worry about. You still have the explosive cast potential of Chad, and some of the timing at oh. which ADD has been forced to enter some of these fights, a bit of different timing now. Rose Thorn over the wall. <laughs> Ultimate <laughs> used by, by Chad here. That's a trash talk uh, Ultimate 5 ever seen. Yeah. It's never going to kill him, but hey, you know. It's like, hey, yeah, screw you. Those so, are the ones you do when there's that's salt no key. objective on the map and you feel more comfortable throwing out the ultimate. Yeah. I mean, nothing to really fight for for a little while, but Immortals and Golden Guardians both have inhibitors that have been exposed at this point. But, and we all have already called it out before. Yusui does have that crucial Infinity Edge already completed. Concept, the more tanky build with the uh, uh, Sterex Gauge and the Jack Shell coming through, not going to be the same kind of damage threat. Instead, really going to be relying on the fact that Young has completed that Rabadons, can look to blow up some of these squishier members. And as Golden Guardians, I mean, they've had a ton of tempo on the map consistently. They're constantly living in Immortal Side of the Jungle, and that gives so much more Threat coming out from Young. Just hop over a wall and take somebody down. He's actually backing away. What item completion does he have? Nothing. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Stick around. Yeah, and that presence on this side of the map for Golden Guardians has meant that they can keep it up with the warning. Look how dark it is for Immortals. There's not much safety for them to venture into their own jungle to oh, try Prismal. to pull out the fish as a GG. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Immortals take down TK. GG, how do you respond? I mean, they they don't have a whole lot of response to go for, a right? It's mostly just like, all right, well, I guess uh, all of our awards don't really do anything. Let's go see if we can take away a couple of these camps, clear out any vision that is remaining on this side of the map. But Golden Guardians, a crucial stumble as the game gets lighter. You see he has also picked up this stopwatch. And both of these teams trying to recreate previous success. Remember, Golden Guardians consistently getting third uh, despite the fact that Summer 22 was not their best performance, whereas IMT, they have not been knocked out before 6th in over a year at this point. IMT trying to find their way back, and neither of these teams, I think, were kind of expecting to be in a position where they had to fight for their lives this early.
And when you're aiming for a particular baseline, because that's your expectations for you and the team based on past performances, then you're getting a little more sweat on the brow during this particular matchup in Elimination Territory game number three. Gold lead still kind of just hovering in the same position for Golden Guardians, but we're at that point in the game where we're looking less at that number, looking less at the existing number of kills for them, and more at what you were pointing out with, where is Yusui in the build? Where is yep. Immortal's greatest point of power? Who can be the difference maker? And even though they're able to get that pick onto Prismal previously, it wasn't at a time where they could push some kind of advantage. Now we're 35 seconds away from the dragon. Now we're under a minute until that Baron yeah. spawns and any picks that are Ooh. found by either side become so much more potent. Oh, they, okay, they forced ADD. He is going to be going Mega. That is a terrible time to do it. It takes mm. about, now from here, it takes about 45 seconds to get your next Mega. Right, you are going to be in a spot where it is not going to be up for this upcoming dragon. That is a great read coming through from Golden Gardens because ADD getting Narrectile dysfunction at the worst time. How is he actually going to be able to interact with this dragon when he's mini? And just so difficult to start building up that bridge and see ADD processing that in his own mind with the rest of IMT venturing towards this dragon. Golden Guardians have started it up. Young looking for the angle. Oh, Prismal. Joey gets the hook, whirling death over to one side, and now Prismal is eliminated. Jojo, or Joey, marked down low as well. The resurrection coming through from the GA, but Chad oh. now completely isolated and blasted down and out of the fight. The Joey concept. targeted by Young, double kill coming through for Concept. Concept was pushing the button with the ghost, pushing it with all the axes and the throws, and with Chad being all alone, cannot step up to the rest of Golden Guardians who get themselves the dragon, the soul now theirs, bringing everybody else towards the potential sites of victory. Yeah, they're going to be moving directly towards the Baron, not going to be trying to end the game, pick up any inhibitors here. They're going towards the big objective. Effectively, again, this gives everybody uh, a lot of money when you actually pick it up And Golden Guardians. They have Young moving around, trying to make sure that Chad cannot find their way over, but this is a slow Baron. ADD can try and teleport to act, try and interact with this one. And even though it is slow, though, ADD and the rest of Immortals, where do they have to go? What wards do they have up? Baron, successful for Golden Guardians. So it's the right play. You go, you get the soul, you get the Baron afterwards, but that makes you feel like you are being primed to try to find an angle to end this game, whereas Immortals now want to really get another good Joey hook, another good engage to win out in the fight to either take the Baron buff off entirely of Golden Guardians or just completely flip the fight. Yeah, and Array doesn't recognize. Now they know. Uh, ADD oh, 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 oh. oh, Array puts in so much damage. Rosethorn going to the back line to finish off. Already eliminating and that's it. Immortals. Golden Guardians that's it. out on top of the fight. Wixie into stasis. But even Yasui, as soon as the rest of the team goes down, there's nothing else to be said for the Immortal squad. Golden Guardians, baby. They're oh. doing it. They're coming in at the last moment, right? This game was so even, it was so hard for Golden Guardians to find these opportunities. But the Morals present the last fight on a silver platter. They give over ADD, Array gets to Risa, and suddenly, with no battle lines drawn at all, it doesn't matter how many items you see he has, he still dies easily all the same. And Golden Guardians, they're gonna be the ones who are gonna come through. So much power coming through, and these guys trying to find the recreation of success of multiple third place finishes. Golden Guardians victorious in game number three, which leaves them victorious in the series against Immortals. This also means that Immortals are eliminated and have reached the end of their run. Yeah. Unfortunately for Wixie, Joey, and Chad, who have had a lot of relatively deep runs and proving grounds previously, it will be ending here. Do want to give a shout out to Yusui, who did join the team at the last minute after Balula's promotion. Not going to be able to continue to showcase what they have shown, but I feel as though has had a solid return already with just a few number of games that we've seen. We know that there's plenty of opportunities for bright futures from these opponents, but they are done with the regular season. It will be Golden Guardians continuing to move on in the lower bracket. 
having a good game number three to bring the victory in this series. Golden Guardians will continue to thrive and move on. But that does conclude the official gameplay. We're going to kick it to a break as we set up for our interview with Rose Thorn on the other side. So stay tuned to hear what he has to say. Welcome everyone to our Verizon post game interview. I'm sitting down with Rose Thorne from Golden Guardians after that 2-1 win over Immortals. Things started off on a little bit of a shaky foot to start things off though, taking a loss in that first game. Heading into the next two games, how are you feeling? Yeah, I mean for game one it just felt like we didn't play like ourselves, so um I mean, even that game, like, they were making a lot of mistakes, so we just tried to, like, stay calm and, like, just tell ourselves, like, we are like, much better than what we showed. And game two was still rough, but I think we played, like, better throughout the series, so. Or as the series went on. A little bit of scaling, we like to see it. And then with this victory, you're officially still in the tournament, you're still officially moving on through the playoffs. How are you feeling looking ahead at this playoff and your chances? Yeah, I mean, I think... I think we have a pretty good chance of making it to at least like the top four, just um, like after this weekend. But yeah, I, I think today was honestly like not the greatest that we've shown, and we can like we'll we'll just do better tomorrow. So then, if today was a little bit less than ideal in terms of the gameplay that we got to see coming out, what do you think then is the biggest hurdle that you have to overcome as a team then moving forward, so we can see the best version of Golden Guardians? Mm, I think. We struggle with like staying calm sometimes and we just need to be more just patient and like just listen to each other and i think if we do that then we'll for sure like that'll definitely like result in like us showing like our best performance and yeah and like as i said before like as the series went on we just got better at it so i think i think tomorrow we'll honestly do even better okay then in those moments where as a team you just have to stay calm just keep moving on is there anyone in particular who's that voice that helps calm everybody, or is it really just team effort on that front? Mm, I think we try to do it together as a team. I, although today in particular, it was, um, I think Array and Concept both were like really good about just staying calm and just reminding everyone about it. Um, but yeah, like in general, I think like we do try to like remind ourselves as a team, like everyone. Hey, okay, then let's talk a little bit more about just the team, how you've been faring during playoffs. In your opinion, is there anyone in particular who's been kind of like main character in your playoffs run so far? Mm, I think, I, I think we're just play the best when we're like play as a team and just not, there's not too much like crazy, like individuals like going for like some outplays and stuff like that. But I think Young's been playing pretty well, at least on his champs as well. But yeah, I, I think overall there really is not a main character in our team. The, the team is together. I love that. Um, and then moving on forward, things aren't going to get easier at any point in the road. Up next, you're going to be win playing against the winner of either TLC or CLGC. Do you have a preference on who you get to see next? Yeah, I think I would personally prefer to play against CLG just because like, they're my old team. So it's like it's it's always fun playing against like your previous team. I know that person was like really um, looking, looking forward to like beating them as well. So yeah, I, I don't know if they play today or if they play tomorrow. Or they play today, right? So yeah, yeah I, I hope they win. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Watching them take down TLC just so you could beat them yourself. Gotta, I love that. Um, before I let you go, give you an opportunity for any shout outs or any final words before we see you next. Yeah, just uh, shout out to my teammates. Um, I think our game one was rough today, but we like all really bounced back and we all stayed like confident. And I think that just shows like we can definitely do better um, tomorrow. But yeah, just shout out to them and my my coaches as well. Thank you, Rosehorn, so much for talking with me. Best of luck moving on, all right? Thank you. Yeah, as for us, still one more series and who Golden Guardians is going to be facing next between CLG or TLC. We're going to take a short break though, an opportunity to get some rest before coming back here in just a few.